everyone, it's me, Sarah T. Today we're covering all things glassware engraving, from prepping your glassware, dialing and settings, and some tips and tricks along the way. Glassware orders, especially in large volumes, offer the ability to offer great markup. So streamlining your process and having the right settings can help give you that big margin everyone's striving for. JDS offers a large variety of shapes and sizes of glasses in case quantity, as well as completed decanter sets, such as this one, which we'll be decorating today. Now, obviously with large volume orders, you'll have to decide which unboxing and prep method will work best for your shop. With this single set, I'm taking all the pieces out, taking a quick glance to ensure no major defects or dirt marks are present. Then I'm going to take my blazer orange, which I pre-cut to a little larger than my design. You may have heard of putting things like wet newspaper or dish soap on your glass before engraving. Many find that works just fine for them, but whether it be soap or blazer orange, the end goal is to help disperse that heat of the CO2 laser as it's hitting your glass. A little side tip of the blazer orange, having it pre-cut to smaller pieces helps, and then when removing the carrier sheet, I like to come from an entire side and not just the corner peel. It's okay for the orange part to move a bit, as you can then come back as it's really pliable and smooth out any bubbles. So now that I have the physical glassware ready for my laser, let's ensure a few things about my artwork. Ultra high detailed logos are not ideal to laser into glassware. This will highlight that micro fracturing that is happening with the laser hitting the glass. Largely filled areas that expose a lot of the glass also are not ideal as they can produce such a large amount of heat from the laser in one area. Another tip you may have heard before is changing your percent of black of your image. For example, I can change my artwork to 80% black, which will also allow my laser to not fire as hot onto the glassware. That isn't something we use here on our machines, but something worth taking note of as it may be best for your machine. Speaking of your machine, all are not created equal and testing on your end is inevitable. When it comes to lasers, speed and power are going to be your biggest factors. There are certain properties throughout different softwares and laser brands, and when it comes to glassware, dithering patterns and DPI can all have a large effect. Jarvis is known to mark glassware nicely, and a lower DPI is going to help soften the blow and reduce that heat exposure to the glass. Remember, heat and glass are not the best of friends. Through a ton of testing here in our shop, we have found on our 80 watt epilogue edge, 30 speed, 80 power, 500 DPI, and Jarvis dithering to give us the best results on our drinkware. Post lasering, you wanna ensure you have no flaky shards and you should be able to run your fingers across the engraving with no problems. Blazer orange can be used as a stencil if you have sand carb capabilities. So I can take this piece over to our Crystal Blast Elite 3.0 to elevate the look just a bit more or we can just remove the blazer orange by hand. Something that may work better is using a little warm water and a soft, non-abrasive sponge. Glassware can be tricky, but with the right prep and settings, it's a clear opportunity to boost your margins. Hopefully this gave you a solid starting point to build from. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.